Okay, so before I even go to the earth bag structure, I want to show you guys the stucco that I put on this. My wife and I actually put this on this little pump house here uh, about, I don't know, a couple months, two and a half months ago. And we still have to put another coat on here. Um, this was just to experiment and it's held up very well. Um, I haven't done anything to it other than just put the initial coat on. And the reason this is significant, you might be like, well, big deal. You know, you see things with stucco all the time, so what? Well, this is what is kind of significant about this to me anyways. So when you go inside this, I built this little pump house out of scrap pallets, okay? And I didn't really put a lot of time into this because it's just, you know, we're going to put a, a water pump in here. And then I'm going to have a solar panel sitting on top of this. And, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of shingles on the roof and things like that. But basically just gonna have a solar powered pump in here and just one of those projects i started it didn't finish it yet um, but anyways when you go inside here what you're gonna see here is take a really good look at the walls in here so what you're looking at is this is all that's underneath that stucco and it was actually surprising to me because you know the way i always have seen stucco done is you know it's always done over buildings with with OSB and things like that. But what I, I was watching a video, I'm gonna put the guy in the description, but he's a guy who's been doing this his whole life and you know he has about almost 200,000 subscribers. I don't remember his name out up front, but I will put the link here. Um, anyways, he did a video and he was talking about how back in the day before you know the codes changed in California or whatnot, that they used to do stucco over open spaces like this and at this i'm taking it's probably out of context a little bit but basically the the point of it was was that you can stucco over gaps like this and i did not know that and so i decided i was going to do a little experiment because everything's an experiment out here so i just put together this basic frame here underneath and that's all that's underneath this stucco now um once the stucco dries it's you know it's pretty hard so because it's mostly cement or actually cement and sand and you know there's minimum cracking in this there's only a, the only places it cracked was when i tried to move this thing because actually like a moron i actually put the stucco on this and then realized oh yeah i have to move this so <laughs> we have like four bags of stucco on this thing and so i have to have my neighbor help me with this tractor move it but anyways i just thought that was pretty interesting so if you're not familiar with stucco this this is something that you know might interest you so i'm going to move on to the next thing and show you all right so on this earth bag structure i have done three actually four different coatings on the outside of these bags about six months ago to experiment and I experimented because I just, there was so much information out there on putting uh, coatings on earth bags and, and it was just conflicting information. Like everywhere I would go, I would just find, one person would say one thing, you go to another site, another person would swear by another thing. Of course my chicken's gonna make noise now, but that's their egg song. So anyways, uh, I, I would just, it was hard for me to find the information, you know, that I wanted, like a, a concrete, you know, no pun intended, but just concrete information on it, what's the right way to coat these bags. And, you know, a lot of people said lime. Uh, lime is still in the running, but, you know, what I ended up finding out from my own experiment was that stucco works the best by far uh, compared to cob or lime plaster or lime, lime coated or lime mixed in with uh, cob and this is what the stucco looks like now the reason this is significant to me is because this thing has been through monsoon season and if you've been following the channel you know i actually this thing got flooded before i put the wall in so this thing's just got hammered by rain when i when i first got out here so um, i got to see firsthand what it did to this cob and to the lime plaster and the lime mixed with cob so Basically, you can see the remnants over here. This was the very first thing I did, and this was just, you know, plain old cob, not a lot of sand. Sand's a big part of it, but um, it, it actually just fell off uh, once the rains hit. And then over here, this is where I started getting wiser. This is actually the best um, coating that I found, and this is actually cob mixed with lime. And this, you know, it, it stayed on, but it cracked more. 
and uh, so it has some cracking and then this right here was actually just cobbed with more sand in it and it stays on but as you can see here it just it looks kind of crummy because it, it just the rain just pelts this stuff when the rains come here they don't come the rains don't come straight down in monsoon season they come like they'll be vertical rains a lot of times so the walls just got hammered with rain and I got to see firsthand, you know, what this looked like prior. And I wish I had a picture, but I don't. But this, this was, you know, it looked nice and smooth and neat before. And now, I mean, it just, it looks terrible. So, you know, the, the clear winner to me was stucco. So I'm 100% convinced that stucco is, is the way to go on these bags. Now, I do have to mention that when I put the stucco over here, I did not use lathe. And I actually had to add more bags to the top here when I was adding the roof and that, that structure or what you're looking at there. Um, so I had to do a lot of bag tampering. So when I did that tamping, I'm sorry, it, it cracked the heck out of this. And it wasn't cracked until I did that. But there's no lathe under here. Okay, so I found that to be interesting too. So there's no lathe under here. And before I even, you know, started doing that to the bags on top, uh, this, this wasn't cracking prior to that. So, but it did get some cracks in it. So I decided what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lathe, you know, this stuff, the chicken wire looking stuff underneath. And I'm gonna attach it to the bags just because I wanna make sure that I don't have to do this again next year. I've watched some videos and people um, from all over the world, I've watched videos on this stuff, and you know, a lot of times when it rains, they're out there redoing the the cob or or the lime even. And I just said, you know, I'm gonna go with the plat the stucco. It's you know, it's been proven many times to work, and you know, we had it on our house in Marana, and it, you know, lived there for eight years and never had any issues. So. That's what we're going to go with, folks, and I just thought I would share that. I know this video may not be as detailed, but uh, the next time I do a video on lime, or I'm sorry, stucco, it'll be a lot more detailed. But um, So in case you were wondering what color we're going with, we're going to be going with some variation of this color, but as you can see, it's drying a lot lighter, so I don't know if I like that yet. So that's just something my wife and Maya will have to discuss what color we want, but that's really the only trick with this uh, when you're putting pigment in is just trying to figure out what, you know, when it dries, what's it going to look like. So the best thing to do is like a building like this where that's just an undercoating just to add, you know, and I have the notes in my head of what, what I added in there, so we'll see. But yeah, you can add pigments to stucco too and, you know, instead of painting it, which the advantage to that is I don't have to paint it, you know, and that's one less thing I got to do in a process out here. So if you just add the pigment prior, you know, there you go. It's done. So anyways, I'm going to get back to work. Talk to you guys soon.